Today we are going to have a look at some Steam pages from successful games and see if we can learn something from them. First, I'm going to show you a quick bulletin on what matters the most when it comes to making a Steam page. We're going to start with the capsule art. Obviously, if your capsule art is bad, no one will click on your game to begin with, which means that all else won't matter. When we look at the Steam page, Valve only shows us the header capsule. Good news is, if we visit the Steam DB page of that same game, and go down to metadata, you will be able to find assets that the Steam page is using. SteamDB is one of the most powerful tools that we indie devs can use for researching other Steam pages. And researching other Steam pages is something you should do often. Hence why I made this video. For example, one of the good pieces of information is how many followers a Steam page has gained under a specific period of time. Let's say an event has happened and you want to roughly find out how many wishlists a game has received from that event. If you take the number of followers a game has received during that event and multiply it with 5 to 8 times, you will get a rough estimate on the number of wishlists. Now back to Steam pages. Once a person has clicked on your capsule art and arrived on your Steam page, the first thing their eyes will do is to either look at the screenshots or the short description. Let's start with a short description. One paragraph, talk about the genre of the game, and shortly describe what the player gets to do in the game. Do not explain the lore and stuff like that. And if you have to do it, try to briefly blend it into the paragraph. The tags are also important, and it's something that you should experiment with throughout your campaign. The first five tags are the most important, and you should not use tags that are vague like indie and casual. Use stronger tags that specifically define your game. Just like I said, it's not a bad idea to experiment with tags. Once every month or two, change around the tags and see if the amount of impressions and clicks you get changes or not. Steam also allows you to ban some of the tags. You can do this by pressing this flag icon. If you try to do this on a game that you don't own, you can only report it. But as a publisher, you can ban it completely on your game and players won't be able to use it anymore. Moving on to screenshots. The first four screenshots are the most important ones. There are two major reasons. One, when you visit the Steam page, the first four screenshots are the ones you see immediately, without pressing next, unless that Steam page has two trailers. The second reason is that when you hover your mouse on a game, Steam shows you the first four screenshots in a slideshow, which encourages clicks. My suggestion is to add as much variation as possible to these screenshots. Either make them artistically different, like Hollow Knight, or try and show different aspects of your game. One screenshot should be combat, another from exploration, another from user interface, and so on. Speaking of user interface, do not shy away from it. If your game relies on it, and your genre is based on it, then you should show it. For example, if you're making a Metroidvania game, then you should show your Metroidvania map as one of the first four screenshots. People like depth, and the depth of your game should be shown on the screenshots. As for trailer, I'm not gonna talk about it for too long, because I feel like the art of trailer making deserves its own video. But one thing I can say is that almost everyone will skip through your trailer the first time they watch it, and they only watch chunks of it, so make your trailer in a way that appeals to that type of viewing habits. I think a total of 2 trailers and 10 to 12 screenshots should be good. After your first 4 screenshots, you should still prioritize the good screenshots to be shown first in line. By the way, a while ago I made a poll asking you guys what you would look at first when you visit the Steam page. Here are the results. Now then, it's time to talk about the long description. It's not important, but it's very important. Think of it this way. At first glance, a book with a lot of pages look a lot cooler than a book with fewer pages, even if the other book is a better book. Most people are not going to read your long description, but it still needs to be there to make your Steam page look good. And the visual assets play a big role in adding quality to the appearance of your Steam page. And the more borders and fade effects you add to them, the cooler they look. I'm a person who plays a lot of RPGs and lore matters a lot to me. But even I don't read the long description when I buy games. Which is why you should try and show that sort of thing in the screenshot and trailers in a more compact format. That being said, a good long description with a good futures list is still essential, especially if you're making an RPG. Last but not least, the award section. If you see a game with a lot of awards, try to write down the name of these awards and find out who gives them, and submit your game to them. Having a bunch of awards on your Steam page is like a bit of icing on the cake. Alright then, I'm now going to highlight a couple of good Steam pages. Link to these Steam pages in the description. Bloodshed. A roguelite survivor's FPS. 
Arco, a Mesoamerican fantasy RPG. This is the game with the awards that I showed you earlier. Hellslave, a dark fantasy dungeon crawler. See how nicely they blend in the game's lore in the short description? That's how you do it. And Sloromancer. Okay, I'm done for today. Thank you for watching. Oh, and uh, my own games are on sale on Steam too. Please check them out.